Okay, so this is 6.1, composite functions. Um, I remember learning this in class. Uh, this was actually a pretty fairly easy chapter. Um, basically, this is the problem that was uh, in the review, and um, essentially all we're trying to do is find f of x and g of x, and the basic way to do that, um, according to the notes in class and the book kind of together, um, you're basically you're just going to write out your f of x and your g of x off to the side because that's what you're trying to find. And the easiest way to go about doing that is you're just trying to split this up. So your f of x is actually going to be um, x to the fourth and your g of x is going to be uh, what's inside the parentheses right here. And that's the, your answer, because that's all it's trying to ask, is if we can find f of x and g of x. Okay, so 6.2 is drawing inverse functions or the one-to-one -one functions. I did remember learning this in class, and I have my notes from it. Um, the homework wasn't too bad. It was kind of interesting trying to figure out um, kind of what it was asking, but nonetheless, it wasn't too hard. Uh, it's pretty simple. It's just more of a concept, kind of a learning curve, but... Essentially, this is the problem that it's giving us. I'm just going to kind of hurry and sketch out the graph so you kind of know that I know that I can do the graph really quick. Um, let's see. Okay, so one of the points that it was giving us was negative 1 and negative 1. Another point that it was giving us was uh, 2 and 1. So that's right here. And we'll go with zero, zero as well, I think is what it gave us. And the curve initially went like this. So I don't know if you can, you can probably see that curve there. But basically all it's asking is if we can draw the inverse and um, let's see, I'm gonna switch markers really quick. Okay, so um, this was pretty cool that I saw, but the original is f of 1, and the new graph that we're going to make is going to be f of negative 1, and our new graph is going to be right here, and we have our f of x, and we have our um, negative x right here. I was going to say, I had to look over to my other graph really quick for that one. Um, so we're basically just going to inverse most of it, but there's a small catch to it in the end. So we're actually going to have a 1 and 2 right here. We're going to keep our 0, 0, because if you inverse that, it'll stay there. And we're actually, if you flip negative 1 and 1, you're going to get negative one and one again, but your catch is we're actually going to switch the actual line in the directions it's going. So we're going to go up like this and we're going to curve that way because that's pretty much the opposite and um, that's the answer essentially. Okay, so I chose to do another one from 6.2. Um, there was kind of a, there's two different little sections to it. So this is um, me kind of explaining how the second section of it worked. But um, essentially this is the um, problem that was uh, given. So we had f of x equals 3x over x plus 2. And it's basically asking us to find the domain and the range and then we have to find the pretty much it's like the inverse of the domain and range so we're basically flipping um, we kind of have to flip these and um, we have to like swap the signs and everything I'll, I'll explain so the domain and range for these two is uh, so, oh well here I'll kind of rewrite the range and domain and coherence to where they're at the range is um, the range just can't equal three in this case because that's what's on top up here and the domain can't equal negative two because that's what's going to cancel this so 
we're going to actually throw our crosses in there. Can't, in a, can't equal negative 2. And our second portion to this is now we have to flip these. So this is what it's going to look like. And I'm going to get my other marker out again for this one. So um, let's rewrite this out. f of x equals negative 2x because we're taking, um, we're flipping this one, we're changing the sign. Uh, essentially, the first step is we're changing the sign, and the second step is we're changing or swapping the numbers in the numerator and the denominator spot. So that's basically all we're doing. Um, so since we've changed the sign here, we're actually going to do the same with the 3, but we're going to throw it in the same fashion as this one. So we're going to do x minus 3, and now we have to find the domain and range of this one. So the domain and range can't equal... Um, negative 2 for this one because that's what would cancel up here and then the domain can't equal 3 because that's what's going to cancel this because if you put a 3 here that's going to equal uh, 0 so uh, essentially that's the entire problem that's the answer right here okay so 6.3 it was titled exponential functions uh, I actually found this being one of the easiest chapters in class and um, on the homework and everything. I actually flew by the homework on this one. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so essentially, I'm, I chose two different problems. I chose number 63 and 65, but we'll do 63 first. Um, honestly, I would say this is one of the easier problems that it would be in the entire, um, the entire uh, course, I guess. I mean, just because the simplicity of it. But basically... This is what was given. We need to find x. Um, I mean, this is uh, pretty simple. It's uh, that we need to equal to this right here, and this is what we have. So I, I guess it's pretty safe to say that x would equal three. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's that's number sixty-three. It's that's that's pretty simple. That's pretty straightforward. You could look right at it. Number sixty-four or sixty-five, excuse me, has. Um, a little bit more thinking to do. It's not as, it's not too bad, but it's it's pretty good. So um, we have two, and then we have a negative x in the exponent, and uh, equals sixteen. So this one requires a little bit more thinking. Basically, all we're doing is we're trying to find x in this case, but we're gonna think what how many times um, can t well we're thinking what can go. Um, in the x place basically and all that is uh is we're taking it's, it's basically what to the power of two can we get to equal 16 but what is also going to accommodate the negative i guess um i mean i i tried different things but it's it's pretty simple so i basically took four for that answer to fit here because that's what's going to equal 16 so two to the power of four and what we ended up doing was um i took a negative because this negative spot up here is what's going to cancel that one right there and it's going to make our 16 so um, x equals negative 4 and that's our answer for number 65. Okay number 6 or er, section 6.4 is um, log functions uh, these weren't too bad it was fairly easy learning how to convert um, you know the log over to uh, kind of the standard form of the log function section but essentially um, well, it's, it's it's technically called exponential form, uh, but this is one of the problems. We, I chose number eighty nine. Uh, this one just to kind of exp show you that I know you know the chapter, I guess. But log three, uh, and then we have x equals two, and this is the problem that was given. So essentially, we're just trying to uh, switch this over to. All right, so this the first step, I guess, is switching it over to exponential form. And then we're just going to basically solve it from there and find our x. Um, so what we're going to do in this case, what we learned in class, is we take this number right here, and this becomes our new base. And then we take this one right here, and this one becomes our uh, exponent. And then since we converted it over in, um, to exponential form, essentially, all we're going to do is we're going to throw our x equals all back in there. And then we're actually going to solve for this. So 3 squared equals 9, so we get x equals 9, and that's, uh, that's the answer right here. 
All right, so 6.5 is uh, properties of logs. This one in class, uh, I actually didn't understand it the first day in class, but uh, as I got home and started working on the homework, it started, it kind of clicked, so um, it makes a little bit more sense. But essentially, it's just, it's taking what we just did in 6.4, and it's kind of elaborating on it more, but it's, you know, a little bit more complicated. It's not too bad. But the problem on uh, number 57, this is what it gave us, it gave us 3 log 5, and these questions are all in the review as well, uh, 3 log 5, and then plus 4 log 5, and we have our V here, and that's U and V. Okay, so basically we just have to, um, we're, we're, we, we're trying to make this a single logarithm rather than two of them, I guess, because, I mean, this is one of them, here's another one. Uh, that's pretty simple. Um, so basically, my understanding of it was you're, you're keeping this log 5 in front because this is what's constant in both, but we're trying to maneuver around these two. So basically, you know, I, I let's see, I came down to here, and we're going to keep the same base like I mentioned and we're going to take this and make it our base, and we're gonna make this one our exponent. So that's one of them. And then we're gonna take this one as our other base over here. That looks just like the U. And we're going to make this one our exponent. And this is essentially the answer, but um, it makes a lot of sense now that uh, we have to keep the base you know, our log 5, because that's what's constant here, but we're switching these around. But this right here is our answer. All right, so 6.6 .6 is log and exponential equations. This one was really tough for me to understand in class. I was really frustrated, and when I got home, it was even harder. But I definitely had to take an extra couple hours and just try to understand what the heck it was saying. But um, I do believe I have... I have it down, so I'm gonna explain kind of what I'm what I'm doing in all of this. Uh, um, all right, so let's just get started. So, the problem that the book gave us, and this is also another review question um, that uh, was gonna be one on the test. So, well, essentially something like it. Uh, we're gonna have log two, and we have x plus seven plus log. To, oh, I keep putting, I put this log in the wrong place, okay. Then we have x plus 8 equals 1. Now the equals sign is, um, in the end, we, can, we get um, an actual answer and, you know, not like an expression. So um, basically what we're going to do is, um, since log 2 is constant in this case, uh, pretty similar to the last chapter, or yeah, the last um, section, we're gonna keep uh, log two as a constant and we'll, we'll use it as one, essentially. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hurry and switch markers. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put that right here. This marker is running out, Never mind. Okay. We're gonna use that right here. And we're gonna, send, yeah, that's our constant. And we're going to Basically, we're going to keep our x plus 7 and our x plus 8, and that's what's going to go right here. So x plus 7, x plus 8 equals 1. We, I, we have to pretty much keep the equals 1 almost all the way through, Well, except for this next section. Uh, next, since there's uh, nothing else to do with this for now, we're going to convert the log into uh, exponential form. So... What we're going to do here is we're going to keep our x plus 7 and our x plus 8. And we're going to, all right, so basically this becomes our base. And then since 1 isn't here, we're going to, that's going to be the exponent, essentially. So it's going to be um, 2 to the 1, which is also just going to equal 2. So, I mean, essentially you could just throw 2 here. So that, that makes more sense. It's more condensed. And then we're actually going to foil these two. Uh, that's going to be our next step. So once we foil them all out, um, we get, let me see. Um, yeah, okay. 
yeah, I do, I do pretty well trying to get most of this in my head. This is like kind of smaller base stuff from 1010 that um, is kind of essential, that I do in my head at least. Um, but this is going to be what it's going to look like all foiled out um, because you have your x times x, which is x squared, and then you have your x times 8, uh, which is 8x, and then you have your 7x that's going to equal this, and then these two together is your 56. Um, so the next thing we need to do is equal it out to 0. So what we're going to do is minus this 2 over. Because that's, uh, I mean, that's probably the most simplest part of this whole problem, other than writing it. Um, plus 54 equals 0, because that now we have 0 there, obviously. And now we're going to have to factor this out right here. So when we factor all of this out, um, we're basically looking at what multiplied is going to equal this and what um, add equals this. That's that's also pretty simple with foiling at least. But we're gonna get um, x plus six and x plus nine, um, and and they're both gonna be plus. They're not gonna be. There's no minuses or anything. Um, but we're going to um, take these and equal them all out to zero. Which essentially we're just gonna switch the sign. So x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 9. Okay, so after this what we're going to do, I switched over to a new marker. Um, I wanted to separate this out to make it kind of more visible at this next section. So I was actually getting held up on this. Uh, in class, I kind of understood all of this because most of it's self-explanatory, but I didn't understand how to um, check for which one was the right answer out of these two because in this case they don't want two of them to be the right answer. So um, basically what we're going to do from here is we're actually going to come back up and take the 7 and the 8 and we're going to we're going to use those as kind of a you know like a test subject essentially. Um, so we're this is how we are going to write it out. We're going to make the greater than sign. We're going to do x plus 7 greater than 0 and then we're going to do I just write it wrong really quick. Uh, we're going to do x is, oh, x plus, that's right. We're going to do x plus a is greater than 0 on this one as well. Okay, so when we get to here, we need to make the greater than 0. We need to make them greater than 0 and solve for x, essentially. So um, basically, we're going to rewrite this to, I won't put the little arrow there, I'll just move on. Uh, we'll put that here, minus 7, and then we're going to do x is greater than negative 8. So essentially we're just flipping the signs. It's kind of similar to what we did up here a little bit. And then um, we're going to actually write up a little number line right here, because, you know, that's pretty much the easiest way to look at this. Um, that was also something we learned in class as well, and more of a visual sort of a thing. But we have negative 8 here, and we have negative 7 here. Um, so the, the negative um, 9, the negative 6 doesn't work in this case. I mean, it, it kind of does, but the negative 9 actually doesn't fall on, um, it falls on the line less than negative 7, I guess, it's because it's way over here, and the negative 6 isn't. So the negative 9 in this case is actually not going to work. Um, because of that reason alone, because the negative 6 is actually a little bit greater than in this case, but we're ask that's what we're asking for here. So our answer is going to be um, um, x equals negative 6. That's, that's essentially going to be our answer for the whole thing. So out of when we were choosing which one of these up here is going to work out for this problem, uh, this extra step right here is what, is what we're trying to do to solve for this.